Mr. McCoy here with part 16 of The Indian in the Cupboard. As you recall, Omri carried Boone's drawing to the teacher and put it innocently into her hand. What happened then made for a good deal of worry and general upset the little men had cost him. First, she just glanced. At a glance, the drawing in the middle of the paper just looked like a scribble or a smudge. I thought you said you were going to do something huge, she said with a laugh. This isn't much more than a... Uh... And then she took a second, much closer look. She stared without speaking for about two minutes while Omri felt inside him the beginnings of a huge, gleeful, uncontrollable laugh. Abruptly, the teacher, who had been perched on a desk, stood up and went to a cupboard. Omri was not surprised to see a magnifying glass in her hand when she turned around. She put the paper down on a table and bent over it with the glass poised. She examined the drawing for several minutes more. Her face was something to see. Some of the nearest children had become aware that something unusual was going on and were also craning to see what the teacher was looking at so attentively. Omri stood with the same innocent look on his face, waiting, the laugh slowly rising inside him. Fun? This was fun, if you liked. This was what he'd been imagining. The teacher looked at him. Her face was not quite as stunned as Mr. Johnson's had been, but it was an absolute picture of bafflement. Omri, she said, how in the name of all that's holy did you do this? Omri, I like drawing small said Omri, quite truthfully. Small? This isn't small, it's tiny. It's infinitesimal. It's microscopic. Her voice was rising higher with every word. Several of the other children had now stood up and were crowding around the paper, peering at it in absolute stupefaction. Small gasps and exclamations of wonder were rising on all sides. Omri's held-in laugh threatened to explode. The teacher's eyes were now narrow with astonishment and doubt. Show me, she said, the pencil you used. This took Omri aback, but only for a second. Uh, I left it over there. I'll just go and get it, he said sweetly. He walked back to his table, his hand in his pocket. With his back turned, he bent over, apparently searching the top of the table. Then he turned around, smiling, holding something cupped in his hand. He walked back. Here it is, he said, and held out his hand. Everyone bent forward. The art teacher took hold of his hand and pulled it toward her. Are you putting me on, Omri? There's nothing there. Yes, there is. She peered close until he could feel her warm breath on his hand. Don't breathe hard, said Omri, his laugh now trembling on his very lips. You'll blow it away. Maybe you'd see it better through the magnifying glass, he added kindly. Slowly, she raised the glass into position. She looked through it. Can I see? Is it there? Can I look? Clamored the other children, all except Patrick. He was sitting by himself, not paying attention to the crowd around Omri. The art teacher lowered the glass. Her eyes were dazed. I don't believe it. It's there. How did you pick it up? 
Uh, well, that's a bit of a secret method I have. Yes, she said. Yes, it must be. And you wouldn't feel like telling us. No, said Omri in a trembly voice. His laugh was on the verge. It was going to burst out. Uh, may I be excused? Yes, she said in a dazed voice. Go on. He took the drawing back and tottered to the door. He managed to get outside before the laugh actually blew out. But it was so loud, so overpowering, that he was obliged to go right out into the playground. There he sank onto a bench and laughed till he felt quite weak. Her face. He had never enjoyed anything so much in his whole life. It had been worth it. The bell rang. School was over. Omri brought out the men and held them up. Guys, he said, I enjoyed that. Thank you. Now we're going to the shop. Omri ran all the way to Yaps and got there before most other children had even got out of school. In ten minutes, the place would be full of kids buying potato chips and sweets and toys and comics. Just now, he had it to himself and he had to make the most of the few minutes he had. He went directly to the corner where the boxes of the plastic figures were kept and stood with his back to the main counter. He was still holding Little Bear and Boone in his hand and he put them down among the figures in the Cowboys and Indians box. He hadn't reckoned on Boone's sensitive nature, however. Holy catfish, said Little Bear. Holy catfish, look at all them dead bodies, he squeaked, hiding his eyes. There must have been a massacre. Not dead, said Little Bear scornfully. Plastic. He kicked a plastic cowboy aside. Too many, he said to Omri. You find woman, I choose. You'll have to be quick, said Omri in a low voice. He was already rummaging through the box, picking out the Indian women. There were very few. Of the five he found, one was clearly old, and two had babies tied to their backs, in parcels laid up like boots. You don't want one with a baby, I suppose. Little Bear gave him a look. No, I thought not, said Omri hastily. Well. What about these? He stood the two other figures on the edge of the table. Little Bear jumped down and faced them. He looked carefully first at one and then the other. They both looked the same to Omri, except that one had a yellow dress on and the other a blue. Each had a black pigtail and a headband with a single feather and moccasins on her feet. Little Bear looked up. His face showed furious disappointment. No good, he said. But there aren't any others. Many, many, class tick. You look good. Find other. Omri rummaged frantically right to the bottom of the box. Kids were beginning to come into the shop. He had almost despaired when he saw her. She lay face down on the very bottom of the box, half hidden by two cowboys on horses. He pulled her out. She was the same as the others, apparently, except that she wore a red dress. They obviously all came out of the same mold because they were all in the same position as if walking. If the others were ugly, so would this one be. Without much hope, he set her before Little Bear. He stood staring at her. What do you suppose Little Bear is going to say about this plastic Indian woman? Share what you think with your fellow listener. The shop would be getting busy now. At any moment, somebody would come up behind him, wanting to buy a plastic figure. Well, asked Omri impatiently, for another five seconds, Little Bear stared. Then, without speaking a word, not 
nodded his head. Omri didn't wait for him to change his mind. He scooped him and Boone back into his pocket and, picking up the approved figure, made his way to the counter. Just this one, please, he said. Mr. Yap was looking at him. Very odd look. Are you sure you want only the one, he asked. Yes. Mr. Yap took the plastic figure, dropped it into a bag, and gave it to Omri. Ten pence. Omri paid and left the shop. Suddenly, he felt a hand on his shoulder. He spun around. It was Mr. Yap. The look on his face was not an odd one at all, but red and angry. Now you can hand over the two you stole. Omri stood aghast. I, I didn't steal any. Don't add lying to your faults, my lad. I watched you put them in your pocket. A cowboy and an Indian. We're going to stop again. What do you think's going to happen right now? Share with your fellow listeners. Omri's mouth hung open. He thought he was going to be sick. I, 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 I didn't, he tried to say, but no words came out. Turn out your pockets. They're mine, Omri managed to gasp. A likely story. And I suppose you brought them out to help you choose the new one? Yes. Ha, ha, ha said Mr. Yap heavily. Come on, stop playing around. I lose hundreds of pounds worth of stuff a year to you thieving kids. When I do catch one of you red-handed, uh, I'm not likely to let it pass. I know your sort. If I let you off, you'd be boasting to your pals at school how easy it is to get away with it, and most likely back you'd come tomorrow for another pocket full. Omri was now fighting back tears. Quite a crowd had collected, much like the crowd in the art room. Some of the same people even, but his feelings were no longer so pleasant. He wished he could die or disappear. It's no good trying to get around me by crying, shouted Mr. Yap. Give them back right now or I'll call the police. All at once, Patrick was beside him. They're his, he said. I know they're his because he showed them to me at school. A cowboy with a white hat and an Indian in a chief's headdress. He told me he was coming to buy a new one. Omri wouldn't steal. Mr. Yap let go of Omri and looked at Patrick. He knew Patrick quite well because it happened that Patrick's brother had once been his paper boy. Will you vouch for him then? Of course I will, said Patrick, staunchly. I'm telling you, I saw them both this afternoon. But still, the shopkeeper wasn't absolutely convinced. Let's see if they fit your description, he said. Omri, who had been staring at Patrick as at some miraculous deliverer, felt his stomach drop into his shoes once more. But then he had an idea. He reached both hands into his pockets. Then he held out one slowly, still closed, and everyone looked at it, though it was actually empty. The other hand, he lifted to his mouth as if to stifle a cough and whispered into it, still. Don't move. Plastic. Then he put them, he put both hands before him and opened them. The men played along beautifully. There they lay, side by side, stiff and stark, as like lifeless plastic figures as could possibly be. In any case, Omri was taking no chances. He gave Mr. Yap just long enough to see that they were dressed as Patrick had said before closing his fingers again. Mr. Yap grunted. Those aren't from any shop anyhow, he said. All my Indian chiefs, chiefs are sitting down, and they 
and that sort of cowboy is always on a horse. Well, I'm sorry, lad. You'll have to excuse me, but you must admit it did look very suspicious. Humphrey managed a sickly smile. The crowd was melting away. Mr. Yap shuffled back into the shop. We'll find out what happens next as the Indian in the cupboard continues. <laughs>